Hi, my name is Jason Wilmoth. I'm an interventional cardiologist in Portland, Oregon, and I was asked today to, to discuss an algorithmic approach to bifurcation PCI. Here are my disclosures. Bifurcation PCI has had an evolution over the number of years with increasing angiographic success and decreasing TVR and in-hospital maze. This corresponds with the uh, evolution in stent technology as well as the evolution and development of more advanced bifurcation techniques. There are many classification systems for bifurcations as seen here. However, the most commonly used classification scheme currently is the Medina classification. This is a binary classification where one uh, represents the presence of greater than 50% stenosis and zero uh, less than 50% stenosis. Uh, these uh, uh, three numbers correspond to the main branch proximal, the main branch distal, and the side branch. Now the approach to addressing bifurcation disease has evolved over the years. Uh, the provisional approach has for a long time been deemed uh, the most preferred approach to treating bifurcations. Early randomized bifurcation trials, many of which are shown in this table, uh, uh, seem to favor a provisional approach uh, as opposed to a two-stent technique. However, if we look at the dates of these publications, these were done uh, more than a decade ago uh, with, uh, without the advent of more uh, contemporary uh, stent technology or contemporary techniques. However, meta-analysis uh, from uh, 12 major studies, including almost 7,000 patients, supported the use of a provisional single stent uh, technique for bifurcation in decreasing DES thrombosis and myocardial infarction. However, uh, other meta-analysis have also shown that two, technique, two stent techniques can also be good. Uh, this is a, uh, um, a meta-analysis that was published uh, just this year looking at over 5,000 patients that showed uh, that two stent techniques uh, also had very good uh, outcomes relative to a provisional uh, treatment, with the DK crush in particularly showing uh, improvement over a provisional technique for target lesion revascularization. The most more recently published uh, Nordic 4 trial looked at the outcomes in patients who got either a provisional technique or two-stent technique. And the uh, curve seemed to favor a two-stent technique, though this was not significant. However, when we uh, looked at the difference between first-generation DES, there was not a significant difference between the two groups, but this uh, difference seemed to widen uh, with newer generation DES. The DK Crush 5 trial was published last year, which showed an improved outcome with the DK Crush stenting as opposed to provisional stenting for left main bifurcation disease. And finally, just last week, the Definition 2 trial was published, and this looked at patients with complex coronary bifurcation lesions uh, who were randomized either to a provisional approach or a two-stent technique. And you can see here that the outcomes for TLR, target vessel MI, or target vessel failure all favored uh, the two-stent strategy over a provisional technique. So what angiographic findings influence our strategy? Well, the vessel size and shape are important, uh, particularly the size of the main branch relative to the size of the side branch, and the size of the proximal portion of the main branch to the distal portion of the main branch. Procedural complications also can impact uh, decision making, including plaque shift, dissection, or loss of stenosis of a side branch. Variations in bifurcation uh, disease and lesion are also important, such as the side branch size and disease, the difficulty of wiring the side branch, the likelihood of side branch occlusion while stenting across it, and the angle between the uh, main branch and the side branch. This uh, led uh, some colleagues and I to develop a uh, bifurcation treatment strategy. Key things that we wanted to identify uh, in the bifurcation is the likelihood of side branch occlusion with stenting across it, the relative size of the side branch and the main branch, and the angle of the side branch off of the main branch. 
The first question that needs to be asked is, is there a need to preserve the side branch? Oftentimes there's no significant disease in the side branch and because of this a provisional technique is very reasonable. However, if there's a plan two stent strategy because of significant disease in the side branch, we then look at the likelihood of side branch occlusion. If there is any degree that the side branch could, that could be occluded by stenting across it, uh, if that is high, then a DK crush technique should be preferred because of the very low likelihood of losing a side branch with this technique. If the likelihood of losing the side branch is low, we then look at the side branch angle. If the angle is greater than 70 degrees, oftentimes a T and protrusion technique can be uh, used successfully. If the angle is less than 70 degrees, a DK crush or a culotte technique uh, could be considered. The provisional approach is the best approach for Medina 100, 110, and occasionally 101. Available data does favor this for a non-left main bifurcations, and it's important to remember to always use a proximal optimization technique to oppose the proximal main branch stents. This should be routine for all bifurcations. Here's a case of a patient uh, with a uh, uh, disease in the AV groove circumflex extending into an obtuse marginal branch. We were able to stent from the main branch into the obtuse marginal branch, jailing the distal portion of the circumflex without the need for a second stent. This next case is a, a patient who presented with an anterior infarct and had a high-grade lesion that was a Medina 110 involving the uh, uh, LAD and the diagonal branch. Because of the lack of disease at the origin of the, the side branch, a provisional approach was taken. We left a wire in the side branch uh, just to maintain access to this uh, vessel, and after stenting the main vessel, we lost all flow into the diagonal branch. We were able to wire back through and open this up uh, by uh, stenting the side branch. So angiographic stenosis in a, stent, in a side branch that has been stented across can be very deceiving and it's important to consider FFR, RFR, or IFR to assess the degree of stenosis of the side branch. It's important to be comfortable with bailout options in case uh, of loss of a side branch, including T and protrusion, culotte, or potentially even a reverse crush technique. The culotte technique is reasonable for bifurcations with a non-left main Medina 111 if the size of the side branch is similar to the size of the main vessel and the bifurcation is less than 70 degrees. And finally, this should only be done if there's a low risk of uh, loss of the side branch that is being stented over. Here is a case of a patient who presented with an acute anterior wall myocardial infarction. We were able to wire uh, through the lesion uh, and passed a balloon down and dilated open the vessel, which restored flow into the distal vasculature. Follow-up angiography now showed high-grade disease in two diagonal branches that were near each other as well as dissection of the main branch after balloon angioplasty. So how to manage this? There's a double bifurcation that are near each other. The LAD diagonal branch number one is a Medina 111 and the LAD D2 is a 101. There's dissection in the left main and it's important to note that management of one bifurcation can affect the treatment options for the other bifurcation. In this case, we put wires out all the, the vessels uh, and stented the main vessel, uh, uh, the LAD, to stabilize the dissection. We were now left with high-grade lesions at the origin of both diagonal branches. So the options for the LAD and the uh, D2 was either to do a culotte or a tap, and the D1 to do a tap or a reverse crush. In this case, given that the main branch size and the side branch size were similar in the LAD D2 bifurcation, we did a mini culotte, making sure that the main branch portion of the side branch stent did not cover the first diagonal branch. Since the LAD diagonal branch uh, number one uh, bifurcation angle was about 90 degrees, we decided to do a T in protrusion of this uh, uh, bifurcation and we got a very nice angiographic result. The T in protrusion technique is an alternative to T stenting where the side branch ostium may not be fully covered so a small amount of the side branch stent actually protrudes into the main branch. 
This is best if the bifurcation angle is greater than 70 degrees and the side branch is smaller than the main branch. Here is a case of a patient who uh, presented with uh, acute coronary syndrome and had a high-grade lesion at the LAD and diagonal branch bifurcation. The LAD diagonal branch bifurcation angle was almost 90 degrees, uh, which was easily treated with a uh, T and protrusion uh, bifurcation technique. The DK crush technique is the best technique for Medina 111 lesions. Initial data for the original crush technique was poor with higher rates of stent thrombosis and restenosis, and this was likely related to the high rate of inability to recross through two layers of stent struts to do the final kiss. The double kiss crush technique has shown to be superior to uh, a provisional or T-stenting in the left main. This is the technique that has the most steps, though is the safest with almost no chance of side branch loss. This is a case of a patient who had an LAD CTO that we were able to wire uh, antegrade uh, into the uh, LAD as well as into a diagonal branch. Uh, we were able to do a DK crush uh, technique and got an excellent result uh, uh, with an excellent angiographic outcome. So in conclusion, multiple bifurcation strategies are available. A provisional is a reasonable approach for Medina 100 or 111 lesions, but it's important to know how to convert to a two-stent strategy if necessary. An algorithmic approach based on the main branch and side branch vessel size Medina class, bifurcation angle, and the risk of side branch loss is useful. Never forget to do a final kiss and a final pot, and you must be comfortable with doing the DK crush bifurcation strategy for left main bifurcations or any bifurcation with a high risk of losing the side branch. Finally, it's important that you're comfortable with multiple two stent bifurcation strategies by doing them in stable cases so that you can do them in an urgent situation. Thank you very much for your attention.